Hey, what's up, bro? You believe in the Bible? You believe in God? Sort of? All right, Kai. We're going to go ahead and open up. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Right? We're the sons of Jacob. We're coming to tear down these lies that they have taught in the Christian church about the Bible, man. And we come to wake up our people and tell them who they are. First, we're going to go ahead and jump into what I asked for, Revelations. Just get that, Revelations 10 and 9. It's the book of Revelations, chapter 10, verse 9. Yeah. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall, sorry, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Uh -huh. So this is the book. The Bible is supposed to be sweet as honey in our mouth, but in our belly it's bitter, man. The Bible, the point of me bringing this out, man, is the Bible is supposed to tear you up with the truth, man. And that's what it does. It tears us up with the truth. The truth, it hurts. Right? That's the title. I probably want this video, bro. Remember that. It might be that. Right? The truth hurts, man. So when we come to learn the truth, it really is sweet to the taste, but it's bitter to the stomach. It's bitter to knowing that God doesn't love everybody. That God is, that he only chose one certain people to rule the entire planet, man. You know what I'm saying? So we got to come to the realization that the Most High God and what we've been taught in this church is a lie, right? We've been told, we've been told that, you know, we're supposed to have kumbaya, join hand in hand. When the Bible talks about separation, God separate the sons of Adam. Can somebody get that for me, Bible Shah? Let's say that in the Bible. Let's say that, that the Most High God separated the sons of Adam, man. I'm sorry, get that. I, huh. Get that for me. Kind, kind, kind. Let me know when you got it. I mean, this is the this is the bitter truth of the Bible, man. Truth hurts. This is Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Bring it out. Remember the days of old. Uh -huh. Consider the years of many generations. Right. Ask thy father, and he will shoot thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Uh -huh. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, right. he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Man. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Man, that's a beautiful scripture, man. That's a beautiful scripture, man. The world, the, the, the children of Israel is the Lord's portion. The Most High God, he God, he divided the nations according to the children of Israel, man. He did it for their sakes, man. Just to show how much he loves them. He loved them so much that he placed his name on them. Nobody else has that name but one people, man. The Prince of Power, man. That has power with God and with man, right? So this is the bitter truth that people don't understand that they don't have, right? Let me get a... What I call for? Um, not the one that's all right. Yes, sir. Because ultimately what I came to talk about, man, is uh, we got a brother, man, that I want to kind of help give some understanding to is that, uh, you know, when we dealing with the dead, man, there's a time, there's a time and place for everything, man. Our, our people, even though we, you know, we come into this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the truth, our people still die. You know what I'm saying? Our people still perish in this world and in this earth. And that's something that we got to understand on how to deal with it and how to cope with it. Yes, sir. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 3, 3 and verse 1. Bring it out. To everything there is a season uh -huh. right. and a time to every purpose yeah. under the heaven. Wait, read that one more time. Hey, how you doing, sis? How y'all doing? Y'all got time to hear the Bible? Okay. People, you know, they got it in it. They, they ain't got time to hear it from the Bible, but they got it in it. Come on, see, read that one more time. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1. Bring it out. To everything there is a season uh -huh. and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, we can just stop right there. It says, to everything there is a season. And it's going to go into those things on this, that everything has a season. It's going to go into, so I can, oh yeah, man, this is, this Bring it out. It's picking it up. I wish I could cover it, but I ain't got it like that. As a matter of fact, I might have it. Bible talks about uh, to everything there is a season 
according to the Bible, man, to everything, man, whether it be life, death, whether it be uh, pain, suffering, joy, happiness, celebration, everything, there is a season. You said you got a precept? Follow what you got. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 38, verse 16. My son, let tears fall down over the dead It begin to lament. It's like lament as if thou hadst suffered it great harm. It's like great harm thyself. And so hold on. It's telling you to go ahead and mourn for the dead, right? It says let tears fall down. Come on. And then cover his body according to the custom. It says cover his body according to the custom, whether it be uh, uh, burial, you know what I'm saying? You dig in the grave just like you did in Tobit. You know what I'm saying? That's what we did for our people. Come on, according to the custom. And, ne sorry, and neglect not his burial. And neglect not his burial. So it tells you not to neglect his burial, right? But you got something that our people fail to understand, man, is that you have a repentant Israelite and you have a non-repentant Israelite, man, right? So you, can on you should only mourn for a short time for a non-repentant Israelite, man. Those, those those people didn't give their time and effort to actually hearing the word of God. Hey, let me get that, who was thy brother in Matthew? Can I get that, who was thy brother? Who was thy brother? Somebody get that. We're gonna get, we're gonna get I think Thahawam, we're gonna get it. Hey, uh, Nazar, uh, Thahawam, can you get Nazar to pull it? Yeah, let him get it. Let us join into the spiritual meat spiritual reward but the Bible talks about every time and there's a time for everything for every purpose underneath the heaven man. and our people fail to understand that also that we don't want to give too much time to the people that aren't repentant Israelites man. there's a time to suffer there's a time to mourn for them but those that are non-repentant, man, they didn't give their they didn't give their love to the to the most high God that created them, man. And that's the bitter truth of the Bible. That is the truth, right? And the truth sets you free, man. It frees you up from depression. It frees you up from from uh uh, uh the hardship, this this the uh sadness. Because the Bible talks about like uh if you know you in depression and mourning, you can die from that. You know what I'm saying? You people literally die from depression. People die from uh, too much sorrow, man. The Bible tells you to cast your cares upon the Lord. Right? You got it? The book of Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 48. Yo. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? Come on. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Uh -huh. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, Who which is what? whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So we gotta identify who our brother, our sister, and our mother is in this truth, man. That's right. When we actually come into the knowledge and wisdom and understanding, we're supposed to do better, man. We're supposed to know who our brother is, right? You have blood brothers. We understand that, man. But you have something that's more that brings you closer to the. To, to the Most High God who created all things, according you, according uh, even you, man, He created you. So the knowledge to that is, He said, "Who was thy brother? Those that do the will of my Father. Those are the same. Those are the ones that are thy brothers, man. Those are the ones that you got to take time to actually lament and mourn and cry out, man, and knowing that 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 soul actually had a purpose in doing the will of their Father, man." That's the harsh truth. Hey, like I read earlier, it says that the, the it says that the book it said it's sweet to the taste but bitter to the stomach. Right? I got I my 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 I got people that are close to me that talk good about the Bible, but they don't want to do nothing the Bible say. They go against God's will, man. Let me get um Isaiah 8 verse 18. The will of thy father. Is it 40 and 8? Let me get that Psalms 48. Man. You know, when you don't go into something all the time, you kind of, repetition is good for the mind. That's what they say. So you kind of lose focus on that. But let me get that Psalms 40 and 8. Let me get that Psalms 40 and 8. 
Is that a brand new boat? <laughs> hey, it's a shark. You gotta go crazy. There you go. It's a hard scripture to get to. <laughs> this is the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. So I delight to do thy will, O oh God. Oh my God. Yeah, thy law is in my heart. So the, the laws of the Most High God is his will. Like Christ said, that those who do the will of my father, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. So the will of the Father is the laws of God, man. Those that do the will, those that do the laws of God right. is the is your brother, is your sister, man. Those are the ones that are closest to you in this truth. Those are the ones you're supposed to treat better. You got it? Kind. Those are the ones you're supposed to treat like a brother. Those are the ones you're supposed to treat like a mother, like a sister, like a father. That's the bitter truth of this Bible, man. We, You know, the Bible, it corrects and orders. It puts everything in order, man. It puts everything in its proper place. Right? We know we're not supposed to celebrate the day of our birth. A lot of people that do that, they place the Most High God over him. Or they place themselves over the Most High God. It's like Right? Go ahead. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Bring it out. For the commandment is a lip, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. All right, so the laws are reproofs of instruction. It's what corrects you. It's what puts you in order. It's what put things in this whole world in order, man. It says that the knowledge, wisdom, and stability are not, uh, wisdom is the stability of our times, man. It's the one that puts things in order. Understand this, man, that those that do the will of the Lord, those that keep the laws of God, that is your brother. That is your sister, man. And that's something that's going, that's, that's a hard thing even to myself to actually um, keep close to, man. But we got it. We are Israelites and we are expected to do things that are hard for the world. These things are these things are hard for the world to do, right? To come out and avoid pork, to come out and avoid um, uh, uh, eating raw steak. You got people that eat blood. They tried to, I seen this video on TikTok talking about the red that you see in the uh, in a steak isn't blood. What is it then? If it's not red, if it's not blood, what is it? Is it some kind of food ingredient that they put in there? That's blood, man. You can't trick me. You're going to pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know the saddest thing about that? Somebody going to believe that shit. Somebody, yeah, man. You know that person got a lot of views, man. Oh, yeah, it's not blood. That's blood, bro. You're going to try to lie to me. Yeah, man. So we got to, hey, it's hard. It's hard being an Israelite, man. It's a lot harder being an Israelite than it is a Christian. The world is completely against us, man. And they hate us, man. And that's the bitter truth. So when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, man. Cause this is not an easy walk. You really gotta put your big boy pants on and you gotta walk this thing, man. I'm talking about it is hard. This brother know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it'd be rough, bro. We hey, Zion, tell him, bro. We walking at five o'clock <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, we home. <laughs> no car, bro. It'd be rough, man. All right. It'd be rough, brother. This truth is rough, man. And you gotta you gotta keep a smile on your face while you do it. Right. You gotta have a joyful spirit while you do it, man. Because that's what's required of you. That's what's expected of you, man. As an Israelite, that's 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 the bitter truth of this Bible, man. We are we are more than this world. We are better, like the Bible says. We are better than all other nations, man. It didn't say that just to be saying it. It's saying it because it really means it. We handle things differently, right? Okay. This is the book of Sirach. Right? Chapter 2 and verse 4. Bring it out. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take, take cheerfully. Do what? Take, take cheerfully. Come on. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. It says, be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. That is a hard thing to practice, man. That's right. Coming into this world, not knowing your heritage, and now you're starting to walk your heritage. You're starting to practice your heritage. You're starting to walk like an Israelite. You got to go to work looking differently i got fringes on everybody looking right what's going on with this brother they want to ask me questions you can tell they want to you in the tech industry everybody got their desk you know what i'm saying bosses is looking i'm like bro go ahead and ask man right. 
right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't ask. Cause I don't want to lose this job yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to keep my job, man. So it's it's hard, man, being in this room. This is not an easy thing, man. That's Some crazy. people can talk about it. There's a lot of brothers that have lost many of jobs over this truth. I'm talking about they lost plethora of jobs. But back into the subject, it says there's a time and a place for everything. Man. That's right. Did you have a precept? We can get your precept before you go back into it. Let me know when you got it. There's a time and a place for everything. You can't just do everything and anything you want to. That's the way of the world. As soon as it pops into their head, they say it. That's not according, that's not an Israelite custom, man. Right, go ahead. This is Ecclesiastes, verse 3, Bring it out. 17. Bring it out. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. That's a beautiful precept, man. It says there's a time, there's a, a time and a place. Read that one more time. So like, Ecclesiastes 3 and 17. Bring it out. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous. Uh -huh and the wicked for there is a time there for every purpose and every work and this is the funny thing man a lot of times when it talks about judgment in the bible people automatically assumes that it's an evil thing but the most high guy says christ is coming with a reward he's coming back with a reward for those that are wicked and for those that are righteous what's going on brother yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can you can video us you believe in the bible what i uh so um you know who we are Okay, so we are the Israelites. We're a Hebrew Israelites, right? When we come to talk, we come to talk about the wickedness that is talked about and lies lied upon this kingdom. <coughs> so we wanted to let you know, brother, that you might be an Israelite, right? An Israelite is a blood. It's a blood heritage, man. It's, it's who your father. Let me get. Uh, yes, sir. You already know Numbers, chapter one. Hey, so if you don't mind me asking you, brother, uh, you see, we got the charts up here, right? Can you identify yourself or better yet, your father? Who would your father be? Would he be uh, considered the world? The world would consider, would he consider African black, West uh, West Indian black, a Haitian, a Puerto Rican, a native Indian? What would your father be? Native. He would be a native Indian? Yeah. So you would be from the tribe of Gad, from the nation of Israel. Don't say it the Bible. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And an African American, what would his father be? If you don't mind me asking, because in the Bible, there's no such thing as a mix, as a mixed race of people. It said that's a that's a confusion, right? It says God is not the author of confusion. So according to the Bible, you are what your father is. Even though the mother might be native, if the father's if the father's a uh, a so-called African American, you are what your father is. Right? So if you don't mind me asking you, what would your father be? What would his race be? African-American. He'd be an African-American because his father was an African-American, right? Okay, all praises. So you would be from the tribe of Judah from the nation of Israel, right? And we up here talking about the, the, the words of this Bible is sweet to the taste, but it's bitter to the stomach. Let me get, y'all brothers, y'all got scriptures for the brother? Okay. We got numbers one. Brother, you ain't got time for the Bible? You ain't got time to hear the word? Oh man, hey, can we? Can, hey, can, can, hey, can I ask you a question? What's the point of recording? What was your point in recording? What was your point of recording? I just seen some uh, black men out here doing some things that's good. I just wanted to record it. Okay, we want to know what we teach about. Yeah. You know, we wanted to give you some knowledge of what was going on, brother. You just, you just kind of popped up and I don't even know. Do you know what was going on? You didn't even seem like you really knew what was going on. Well, can I? Start teaching me when, when we start talking. Okay. Yeah, you just kind of walked away from the conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was trying to figure out what's going on, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you mind if I hand you a flyer, brother? No, sir. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure. man so we are here telling our people who they are according to the bible and why this is relevant let me get revelations 21 and 12 real quick because we know you 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 know the lord's prayer you know the lord's prayer brother okay so you know in that prayer it talks about his will being done on earth just as it is in heaven so he's giving you a clue he's telling you that the kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth 
All right, we're going to give you a little uh, uh, example of what the kingdom will look like here on earth. Check this out, brother, because this is not what you've been talking about, taught in the Christian church. Come on. The book of Revelations, chapter 21 and verse 12. There you go. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. Now, did you know that the kingdom of heaven had 12 gates? Because me being a Christian church, I've always thought that the kingdom of heaven had one gate. One pearly gate. Do you know that to be... What were you taught about the kingdom of heaven? Did it have 12 gates or did it have one gate? What were you taught? I was taught one gate. What were you taught? One gate. So let's hear it again what the Bible says. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. Now how many gates? 12, 12 gates. gates. Come on. And at the gates, 12 angels uh -huh. and names written thereon. So there's names on these gates. Let's hear what the names are. Are the names African Americans? Are the names going to be... Uh, uh, American? Are they going to be Brazilians? Let's hear what the names on these gates are. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel? So if you don't know your identity in Christ, you will not be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is some knowledge that you got to, as a father, be teaching your children. This is very important, brother. And whether you make it or not, you should at least teach it to your kid because they might have a possibility of making it. They got to know their identity in Christ. Christ knew he was an Israelite. Paul knew he was an Israelite. From They knew what tribes they was from. You see what I'm saying? So you got to know that too, brother. That's important to walk like Christ. You see what I'm saying? There's many people calling themselves uh, Christians, and they're saying that they're walking like Christ, but they're not doing it at all. They're not walking like Christ at all. He says, uh, many will call and, and say unto me, Lord, Lord, but they should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let me get that precept, Bob Christian. Well, you got that? Maybe they that's what we're trying to teach you and people walk away from the teachings yeah. hey, because he said hey let me get proverbs 1 and 20 people he said he keeps he keeps stretching his hand out and people are disregarding him he's stretching his hand out to you brother it's not a good time to walk away let me know when you're ready god this is luke chapter 6 verse 46 Bring it out. red letters it says and why call ye me lord lord and do not the things which i say so why you call Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things that you say? Which is going to go good with this one. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 21. Bring it out. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. It God. says, not everyone that saith unto me. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Come on. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that doeth the will of God. That do what? That doeth the will of God. my father. You want to know the will of God is? Do you want to know what the will of God is? That's an important thing because this is Christ. This is red letters. Read it again. That doeth the will of my Father uh -huh. which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, will we not prophesy in thy name? Uh -huh. And in thy name have cast out devils. Uh -huh. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Come on. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Those are very important things, man. You got to do the will of the Father, and you cannot commit iniquity. So you got to learn two things. You got to learn three things, brother. You got to learn the will of the Father. You got to learn what iniquity is, and you got to learn what repentance is. Those are very key things to enter into the kingdom of heaven that's going to be here on earth. You believe in the Bible or not, brother? Oh, you know, bro, he, oh, bro, oh, man. Hey, man, that's a sad thing, brother, because he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, man. That's a scary thing, man. The most high guy going to tell that brother face to face, man. That's not our fault. We trying to teach the brother. We trying to tell the brother. We, most high God's hand is reaching out, but no one regards. So there's going to be a lot of bloodshed when it comes to the Lord coming back, man. Everybody knows that America is collapsing. The economy is collapsing, man. This world is going to be no more. It's going to be finished. And it's all too due to the Lord, the Most High God. Did you hear something? You hear something? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. Bring it out. I delight to do thy will, uh -huh. O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. There it is. The will of the Father, man, is the law. It's his law, man. Let me get that Psalm. Let me get Proverbs 1. I believe it was. Oh, did you hear that? You already had it, Thomas. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cry without. 
she uttered her voice in the streets. Verse 22, 21, she cried in the chief places, sorry, in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttered her words saying, how long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning. Man, everybody, everybody will come and they'll listen for a time, but they won't, they won't hearken unto the voice of the Lord. They'll be like, I love God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God, man. We hear these same things all the time, man. We hear these very uh, um, simplistic things all the time, man. We get tired of hearing it. But this is the long suffering that the Most High God called us to do. This is the long suffering that we got to adore, right? People saying they love God. They come and take pictures of us. They come and record us. But then they don't want to really hearken unto the voice of the Lord, man. They don't really want to do, man. They don't fear the Lord, man. That's the first step to loving him. Let me get that in uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. That's the first step to accepting him. Having the fear of the Lord is very important, man. That's very important. You got to have fear. You got to understand that he is the creator, man. He is a God of terror and he is God of love. He has a, he has emotions. The most high God has emotions. He has anger. He has love. And this is something that people fail to understand, man, that he's going to come back and kill people. He's actually going to destroy people, man. And people are going to be looking like, what is going on? I thought God, I thought Christ was all about love. Right? They're going to be confused. This is Ecclesi 12, 13, 12, 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. And this is something that our people fail to understand. This is something that our people lack, man. We lack this understanding. Come on. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Yep. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Us, let us hear the slide. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. And keep his commandments. This is what he told us to do, man. He keeps telling us over and over again to fear God. He keeps telling us to have fear of the Lord. I don't fear God. Why do I need to fear God? You need to fear. You better fear him. Do you understand what he did in the Old Testament? He's trying to show you love and compassion now, man. He's trying to show mercy right now. He's trying to show grace right now. But the God of terror is coming, man. Come on. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 7. Bring it out. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Thus saith the Bible. Come on. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Say what? But fools, fools despise, despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instructions. Y'all brothers got anything? Let me get, you got a precept? Okay. It's a fools, and that's what we see a lot of times, man. And we hate to see that our brothers are, are foolish, man. We hate to see that our people are foolish because they need this, they need this medicine more than anything. They need this medicine more than they need money. They need this medicine more than they need Bro, they need this medicine more than anything, man. Like, this is the, the downfall of our people, and they got to start walking. They got to start suffering. Dang. This is crazy stuff, man. Man, I'm telling you, brother, I'm a wreck. Hard. Man, this is rough stuff out here, man. This is, the, this is that battlefield. What you got? This is Deuteronomy 6 and 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments. It said that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes. Come on. Which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy lives, and that, 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 and that thy days may be prolonged. That's a beautiful precept. They say to do it forever. That thyself, thy sons, and thy son's sons. That's a long time, man. You're supposed to teach your children these commandments, man. You're supposed to teach your children to fear the Lord. If you see your child don't fear the Lord, make them fear. Bring fear into them. Do you understand why this plague has happened? Do you understand why this sickness? Do you understand why these, what was it, 60 tornadoes touching the earth at once? There was recorded 60 tornadoes, bro. That's not a normal thing, man. Was it in Alabama? I don't know where it was, but I heard it was 60 tornadoes. Bro, they, they was, the people was explaining how they said when they was looking at it, it looked like two tornadoes wrapping. I heard that too. In each other. Yeah. And the Man. tornado was destroying the whole town, so it was doubling back. So you know that was judgment. Yeah, it would, it would go and it would come back. 
man, talking about that's some crazy stuff, bro. And then to, oh, and then they still don't get it. I still don't fear the Lord. Well, show them a video of a tornado and what it can do. You know what I'm saying? Take them to a place that got strong wind and see what it do to power lines. And it uproots trees. And it knocks over cars. Cars. I heard a, I heard a, uh, a, 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 a strong enough wind can take a straw and uh, push it all the way through a, a lap post. So guess what it can do to your body? If a straw can go, if a wind, a tornado wind can go, uh, takes a straw and push it all the way through uh, a lamp pole, what do you think it's going to do to your body, bro? Man, that's dangerous stuff, right? What you got? You said you got a precept? Come on, wait. This is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter, thir sorry, chapter 3, verse 13. Okay. Go. For whosoever despises wisdom and nurture, he is, a, sorry, he is miserable and their hope is vain. Their labor is unfruitful and their works unprofitable. Right. It says, He that despises wisdom, his works is unfruitful and his labor is vain. It's up to nothing. Right? So it's, it's good for nothing. And the Bible talks about some people are born in vanity. That is a sad thing, man, because they don't know how to fear the Lord or worship him. People think that they can worship God any type of way they want to. The Bible tells you, he tells you how to worship him. Right. He tells you how I want you. He's like, this is how I want you to worship him. Here's a book. Read it and do it. People don't do it, man. And then they'll come and tell you, I love God. I'm a child of God. Well, what do you do according to God that he say to do? Right? Do you fear him? Do you love him? Do you Are you obedient to him? Right. They say that obe obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. That's what the Bible say. Can I get that horn? <laughs> God, yeah. obedience is better than sacrifice, man. That's said the Bible, man. What you got? Uh, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 18. Bring it up. The fear of the Lord. The what? The, the fear, fear of the, the Lord, Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. That is a beautiful scripture, man. You got more on that? That's a beautiful scripture. It says the fear of the Lord is the first step. To be accepted of him. Come on. And wisdom obtaineth his love. Uh -huh. And wisdom obtaineth his love, man. Wisdom obtaineth his love, bro. Nineteen is a good one. It's a verse nineteen. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Ah, Lee, that is a beautiful precept. The knowledge of, read that one more time. Turn. Turn. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 18. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord uh -huh. is the first step to be accepted of him. And wisdom obtaineth his love. The knowledge of the commandments. Oh, hold on. It said wisdom obtaineth his love. So if you want to obtain God's love, what do you got to do, brothers? What do you got to do to obtain God's love? You got to have wisdom, right? Yes, That's said the Bible. To obtain God's love means to uphold, to hold, to cleave to, to have. Obtaining means to have. So if you want to have God's love, if you want to obtain God's love, you got to do what? You got to have wisdom. And what wisdom is he talking about? Any old wisdom you go to your university? Is that the type of wisdom you got? To, you got to go to a, a, a cemetery school? A seminary school? You got to go to a seminary school to obtain? No. He's talking about the knowledge wisdom of the Bible. Anytime the guy talks about wisdom and knowledge, it's always referring to his laws, man. That's what it's always referring to. Did you finish that out? Let me get 19. We're going to get your precept. Verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The knowledge is doctrine of life. The knowledge of the commandments is doctrine, man. It is the principal thing. That's the first thing you got to teach your children. To learn to fear him. Because if you don't, you're going to die. You're going to perish. What you got, King? This is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Bring it out. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. And your understanding in the sight of the nations. Right. We shall hear all these statues and say, 
Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the wisdom and knowledge of the commandments is what we're supposed to keep, is what we're supposed to hold fast to, is what we're supposed to obtain to have the love, to have life, to have liberty. God, you got something? God, keeping the commandments of the Most High God, man, he's always telling you to keep his commandments and live, to keep his commandments, to fear him, be obedient. He says the same thing over and over again, man. But our people are wicked. They choose to they choose to lean on their own understanding. Go ahead. This is the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. So if you want wisdom, you got to ask the Most High God. Let me get Hosea 4 and 6. Let me get Hosea 4 and 6 because you, you, you won't. If you want wisdom, you ask of him and he's going to direct you. What are you going to do? He's going to send you a video or he's going to send you a brother or a sister, man. That's going to lead you to what? His laws. He's going to lead you. They're going to lead you to his commandments. That's what they're going to do. You're going to find yourself down and desperate, desperate, depressed. God, I need you, man. I need you. To, I need your help. What are you going to do? Send a brother that has understanding and give you that understanding. He's going to send you a brother that has understanding of the laws to give you that understanding of the laws. Right? Come on. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. Bring it out. My people are destroyed. They are what? They are destroyed. They are what? They are destroyed for lack of knowledge uh -huh. because thou has rejected knowledge. Because they what? They, they rejected knowledge. knowledge. They rejected knowledge. Come on. I will also reject thee. He will do what? They will, will also, also reject, reject thee. thee. The Most High God is going to reject you because you rejected him. That's a simple, man. And we're going to finish out on that. The Most High God is going to reject you. Right? Come on. That thou shall be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. He says it over and over again, man. It all comes back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Father, man. He's trying to point you. He's trying to direct you to wisdom. He's trying to direct you how to build a strong nation, a strong people. Not all of our people. We understand this, man. We only out here for a certain select few people, man. And the rest of our people got to die. That's say the Bible. The rest of our people got to be killed right here with the wicked, right? That's just how it's got to be. And that's the bitter truth, man. That hurts. That hurts us, man. The truth is a lot of our people, a lot of our people that we love, man, our grandmas, our grandpa, grandfathers, our aunties and our uncles are going to die here with the wicked. They're going to die here with people that love to hate you. These people love to hate you, man. You got white folks that just want to keep you down, man. They want to keep their foot on your necks. They want to keep. They want to call the police on you. That's the first thing they want to do. And you already know, man. Hey, you already know that the everybody knows that the police is against black people. That's right. Everybody knows that. So why are they gonna call somebody? Why are they gonna call the police on you? And you know the police is gonna do some kind of unjust thing, man. Right. It's crazy, man. Women. women, right? Your your own women will do that to you, man. Right. That just shows you the demon that be hopping up on our people, man. And that's a sad thing, right? But we we are in a we are in a position we are in a situation that that's really that's a this is hell. This is a hell hellish place, man. Right? And the Bible talks about that too. Did you have something? This is the book of James, chapter two and verse six. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you? Right. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? So you see that rich men, you got more on that? Okay, so let me get back to Ecclesiastes 3, 2, uh, 3. So the rich, the, the wealthy oppress us, man. So we see that the wealthy oppress us. And the poor of their own people know that the police oppress us. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. We got to come out here and say that. We got to come out here and have marches. So so that they can stop killing us. Everybody knows that, man. Everybody knows this system is against us. Black folks, Hispanic people, Native Indians. They know that they are, the, the, the system is against us. They know this, man. So why not come out of her like the Bible say? Why not come together? Why not come together, man?